How's it guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm here at the amazing Jackalberry Ridge campsite in Marloth Park, just outside one of my favorite places in the world, the Kruger National Park. And it is finally here. You guys have requested it, I've had a stack of questions about it, and finally this is it. This is the full in-depth walk around and review of my choice of trailer, the Echo 5 off-road trailer. Enjoy. So we just had the most fantastic afternoon. This is wild. Now, I am by no means saying that the Echo 5 is the only option. I'm just saying this is what works for me on my adventures. I've done around 15,000 kilometers with this trailer in the last year and a half, and I absolutely love this setup. And I'm gonna take you guys through exactly what I like, exactly what I don't like, and why this is my preferred choice of off-road trailer for my adventures through Africa. Just as a side note, I am in no way sponsored by Echo 4x4 Center. I purchased the trailer myself. Right, doesn't matter what trailer you're setting up, always remember, put your chalk blocks in. So another cool thing on this trailer is the leveling system. One thing comes with this ratchet strap. You might think there's no way this ratchet strap can lift a trailer like this, but check this out. One thing I will say though, if you're going to go for the Echo 5, make sure Echo gives you a slightly longer strap. It's fine on a perfect campsite like this, where it's level, but on a campsite that's quite undulated, you need a longer strap, otherwise it doesn't pull through the ratchet. But I absolutely love this idea. Big ups. So, the table on the Echo 5 slides out of the kitchen unit here. So it's a drop down table. The freestanding table slides out of it. It's really cool. I just use the locks for security. You just drop that down. And the table slides out. It does rattle a little bit on the corrugated roads, so I'm planning on putting a little piece of rubber in there because it does have a little bit of play which it needs for flex, but yeah, I think it's a great idea. So, you guys might have remembered in my Desert Wolf camping trailer review and walk around, I spoke about those storm pegs with the springs and the guy ropes. Absolutely love them. Biggest problem with those things is, it doesn't matter how you tie them up when you're putting down camp, they always get entangled in a big canvas bag. It's actually a mission to untangle when you get to camp. You lose like 10 minutes. Check this out. 
Wild Dog 4x4 and Wild Dog Outdoor created this. It's a set of Storm Pegs, Storm Guy Ropes in this little bag. 10 pegs, 10 guy ropes. They've all got their place. You can't lose anything. You don't get tangled. It's an absolutely amazing piece of kit and it's bulletproof. I mean, the biggest storm can hit, no problems, as long as the ground is hard enough. This has changed my life, hey? I threw it in the Echo for this trip and I absolutely love it. So the poles for the tent, the tent poles, are stored in this dust cover on the Echo. Really nice thing about it is you're not shoving poles into a certain compartment in the trailer. There's no rattles. So I really like that. One thing though, it does make the cover a little difficult to put on as one person. You sort of need two people. I've managed and perfected it. But yeah, I dig this. To get the tent over, there's no electric option. You just got to use your, your strength. And with two people, it's easy. One person a little bit tougher, but what I do is I stand on the nose cone, and nose cone is strong enough. Then you just have to get it past a certain point, and it unfolds itself. So it actually works okay. It's a very big tent, so there's a lot of material up here. Luckily, the covers they provide more than enough space to house the all the canvas and PVC. Let's get it set up. So this tent is huge, a massive tent. With these awnings on the side, it's basically a 360 degree awning. The nice thing is, you know the trip Tom and I did to Botswana last year to Moremi, we had a lot of one night stays and this is a job. For one nighters, this is a job. So simple Velcro, we just Velcro them off. We kept the awning by the kitchen, we kept the awning back here for shade. Magic, worked perfectly, but for this trip, where there have been four nighters, three nighters, some five nighters. I put these awnings on. And shade wise, they produce enough because you just move around the trailer during the day, depending on how the sun moves, and offers enough shelter from rain. And I really dig the adder room side. It's not an adder room, but it's the side of the tent. In here is my office. When I go away, this is my office and my house, all in one. So my changing area, where I charge my cameras, where I dump my footage, it's in here. Enough ventilation gets through here. I feel very safe here at night, even with the predators walking around. So Echo 4x4, I really enjoy their tents. So the canvas is next level. I'm sure it's just standard ripstop, but I don't know why. It just doesn't give any troubles. You know, the zips, proper YKK zips, they just work effortlessly. I mean, I haven't had to spray them with silicone spray, nothing. I'm very impressed with their tents. One thing to mention is, you know, if you're on your own, I don't mind setting this stuff up, but it is work. It takes around 30 to 40 minutes to set up with all the poles. There's a lot of poles. Once it's set up, magic. So anything less than three nights, I'd say, mm, it's not really worth it. But anything more, it's worth it. Eh? Especially five nights. If you stay five, four or five nights in a place, even the three nights here we've got a Jackalberry, this setup is absolute magic. I really, really enjoy it. Eh? And people always say, Ed, oh, that looks like a lot of work, man. Surely you can fit everything in your car. No ways. You know, camera gear, my whole back seat is just camera gear. So my trailer is housing my food, my drinks, another fridge, another 90 liter fridge effectively. It's housing all my supplies, all the food. You know, we're on a 25 day trip here. We don't have time and we also can't resupply at many of the places along the way. So a trailer for me, I enjoy trailer camping. There's a spot for it and there's a spot for car camping. I prefer trailer camping. I don't struggle towing the trailer. You know this thing, it goes wherever the vehicle goes. So there's a place for everything. I don't slate car camping and I don't slate trailer camping. And in terms of filming, you know I've got a fantastic room here and it's been raining in a couple of the places we've been to and this is like a house basically. It also has drop sides so you can turn this thing into a proper proper house meaning you know you've got rooms all the way along the side here but those things are very heavy and say I was staying at Storms River for three weeks 
I'll put that up because then you've got fully self-contained. But here, it's just not worth it. Eh? Right, so the kitchen area of the Echo 5. This has got to be world's longest drawer. Eh? I'm going to pull this thing out. It is a fantastic drawer. Eh? Almost runs the entire length of the trailer. In here I keep things like my flask, the LED lights, bread rolls, basic essentials like spices, some pots and pans and it really has a lot of storage, plenty for what I need. So I wouldn't need any other drawers in the trailer. It's also in a great position, just above the fridge. I don't need it that often, so I just slide it in and out. It doesn't get in the way. One of my favorite parts of the Echo is the kitchen. You've got everything you would need for a serious overland trip. I've been on the road for almost a month now and there's been plenty of space for everything that I need. It also seems like the guys at Echo have thought about the height of everything. You know, the table here, the, the surface here, it's at the right height. You're not straining your back, you're not leaning down. The fridge slides out in a perfect position. And if you need to access anything, it's just so easy to slide things in and out. You've got five wine glasses, five tumblers, six plates, six bowls, six side plates, six mugs, and four little whiskey glasses. Enough space for my pots, my pans, my kettles, my jet boils, and coffee tray to keep your meat in when you're done brying. Everything is quick and easy, and I really love this. is This is where a trailer really comes into its own on a trip is the kitchen. You know, in a vehicle, specifically my vehicle, you just can't have a kitchen like this. And if you're away with your family, it keeps everyone happy if there's enough space in the kitchen. This is the door that covers where the fridge slides in and out. In here it houses my cutting boards, other sort of utensils, knives, forks in this sort of canvas material. Really enjoy it. What's nice is I put two hooks here. So one here, one here. And I actually house my keys, both the set of keys for the trailer, the set of keys for the car. It's a great little spot to house them. And yeah, nothing much more to say, yeah. So the fridge I've got in the Echo is the 81 and a half litre Snowmaster Traveller Series fridge. I absolutely love this thing. It's a dual zone fridge, which means I can run one side as a fridge, one side as a freezer, both as a fridge, both as a freezer. Absolutely awesome, great quality product. I've had it in the Echo now for a couple of months, performing well. It's a great addition and what's nice is it fits into the fridge slide no problems and I must say that Echo clearly use very high quality slides because this fridge slide seems really over engineered but if there's something you want over engineered it's the fridge slide. Slides out nice and smooth never had any issues with it but every time I take it in they service it and check it works great. A very important thing inside your trailer is to ratchet strap your fridge down. The roads that we go on, this thing will simply jump around inside the trailer, probably break something and the plugs at the back will be exposed. Get yourself a ratchet strap. There are points on most of these trailers to ratchet strap it down. Make sure there's one on this side, one on the other side, you'll never have a problem. So this is the Bry Grid, I've got it in the Echo. It's a front runner Bry Grid with a ratchet strap around the top. Really, really simple just pull straight off and it's very very easy to clean my recommendation is clean it as as soon after you've cooked as possible when the stuff is still sort of warm pour some water over it make sure you handle it with gloves clean it and then it's good simple as that
welcome to my house. This is where everything happens. We are get changed, we are dump footage. It's my office and my bedroom all in one. It is huge, massive. You could fit two more stretches in here if you wanted to. The options are endless yet again. It's got the same, obviously, fly sheet and canvas option, so you can open it completely or have the mosquito gauze or the canvas down. And these tents are really well insulated. Obviously, it's a canvas tent, so it gets quite hot, but if you open everything up and there's a little breeze, it's bearable, even in the middle of summer. Let's go have a look inside. This is the interior. Got my laptop here for when I'm editing or dumping the footage. And this obviously folds up and down. It's the other door on the other side of the trailer. And this also screams storage, hey. I've got four boxes in here. And you might think boxes, it's wasting a bit of space. Why not put drawers? But these boxes are just so versatile, hey. And the nice thing is when I'm packing at home, I just take the boxes out, take them inside, pack straight from the cupboard and then bring them here. I don't have to bring everything by hand and then put them in. It's an advantage of boxes over drawers and they slide out really easy. It's got a lot of spares in here, all the little nuts and bolts and Q20, that sort of stuff. A couple of extra pots and pans. I store some drinks in here. You can fit around a case of beer in each of these ones. And yeah, so there's four here. And then I'll show you my cupboard for my clothes. This is my cupboard. This is where my clothes are stored. Also, four of the same size boxes. The door just opens like that. What's really nice, all these compartments in the Echo got these little LED lights. Really nice. This trailer is well lit. And yeah, my clothes are just in here, fold in and out. This area here is for my toiletries. There's a little mirror there for the missus. And yeah, I enjoy this cupboard. You fit so many clothes in here. Eh? You never have a shortage of space. And yeah, another thing on the Echo, it works really well. Obviously this closes, this whole area closes up at night and the canvas flaps up and Velcro's up here and then you zip it tight. Now, this is where the magic happens. All my afternoon naps between filming sessions happen up here and this is my favorite area in the Echo. The mattress is a high density foam mattress but I don't know what it is, it almost feels better than my mattress at home. Great quality, I always have a good night's rest. What's lacquer here is, this is the mosquito gauze and this is the canvas and it's completely open so I can open it completely or mosquito gauze or mosquito gauze and canvas so I'm fully protected but in places like this Jackalberry there hasn't been any mozzies so I have I sleep with this thing open thunderstorm is brewing which means a nice breeze is coming through here makes the afternoon naps pleasant this is also a really cool bracket that I had fitted at Echo. First of all, it stops you from rolling off the bed because it's like a barrier, but it's got a zip on it with two little pockets. And I put my car keys in there, my headlamps at night. I know exactly where they are if there's an emergency and it just folds out underneath a mattress when you're traveling. So this is a really nice bit of kit, this. This is the wash basin. It's got one basin and one drying rack. You'd probably like two basins, so I carry another one in here. You could just swap the drying rack out for that and you can peg down your cloths, your cleaning cloths here. And there I have the ice maker. I am planning to build the Snowmaster ice maker into the trailer at some point. I haven't gotten around to doing it, so I carry it loosely, which is not ideal, but I've got that on the table. Obviously hot and cold water taps here. Instant hot water from the geezer, cold water, makes an absolute treat the 130 liter water tank i've never run out of water even on the longest trips it works nice and yeah it is a great addition to the trailer the entire wash basin goes straight into the nose cone no issues so this bit of kit the atlas gas geezer has been an absolute revolution when i bought the trailer originally it didn't come with it I installed the water pump immediately and it made a big difference, but I didn't have hot water to wash up dishes and stuff. And it is a mission out there in the bush. You've got to boil kettles and then pour kettles into buckets and that sort of stuff. Just makes it an absolute mission. 
this thing over here superb it has worked faultlessly now i bought it before ckgr and i've used it on ckgr and this trip and it's absolutely amazing the hot water is instant you just connect it to the gas bottle and to the two water inlet water outlet and the water comes out piping piping hot i really dig the way they've mounted it at the back here with this plate it it survives central kalahari so it's got to be a good mounting system and what's nice is it's not exposed so if there's wind i simply close the door and it won't cut out because there's a, if there's enough wind it could cut out but it's protected make sure there's enough ventilation but protected and you usually i position the trailer in a way where the wind won't catch the rear area because this is where all my camera equipment and that stuff is stored when i'm charging it but the gas geezer absolutely amazing reasonably priced very happy with it and i can have a hot shower as well what more do you want now this has got to be one of the best additions i've made it's a new one for this trip there are two taps at the back here one is hot one is cold i just need to spray this tap red for the hot water and i've got a shower you connect a longer hose to here it feeds through the water pump and i've got a shower it's been stinkingly hot on this trip and i've actually been using this to cool down just with the cold water it's worked an absolute treat this is just one of those cheap uh, shower heads you get from builder's warehouse or any of those places but this has absolutely changed the game for cooling down in the campsite it works unbelievably well in these two canvas bags the rear area of the echo next to the geezer i keep things like my bry brush the brush to clean the bry gas fire starters spare couple of damper shocks the wheel nuts the extra wheel studs the wheel spanners the triangles all the safety stuff and all the stuff for sort of starting the fire things that get a little bit dirty i keep in these two pockets here they've got a reasonable amount of space they're not huge but for thin items it works the wheels and tires are the standard 15 inch rims and these are some ko2s on here might change them not really necessary seem to do well and yeah on here i keep my bri grid front runner bri grid that i use at night just pulls on and off the spare wheel works really well i wouldn't really put anything else on the bracket here and yeah the door seems to swing open really nicely even though it's carrying a lot of weight with the geezer that's the rear door of the echo this is the main trailer bin and this just screams storage the amount of space in here is unbelievable I haven't got one of those slides, so Echo Seller slide, where you can slide the whole load bin out. I haven't got that. It's a really nice bit of kit, especially if you don't want to be leaning in there and picking heavy items out, it might strain your back. But I don't have a problem with doing that. And it carries all my ground sheets, camping chairs. All my drinks are normally strapped down in here. For Central Kalahari trip, I had four jerry cans of fuel strapped down in here. And there's just so much space. Hey? I tie everything down. They've got various tie down hooks and it works absolutely fantastically. I might consider the pull-out slide at some point, but for now, this works really well, especially if you're carrying an additional ground tent, you know, a canvas ground tent, it just goes in the back here. And yeah, I really like the storage area in the, in the back of the Echo 5, and I've never actually filled it up. So for this 25-day trip, it has worked an absolute treat. Love it, love it, love it. So this is obviously an older model Echo 5, so it doesn't come with the most sophisticated battery system. The new Echo has come out with a completely different system. You know what's really nice about this thing? It just works. It never fails. It's not complicated and it does everything I need it to do. It's housed nicely on the inside bin here, so it's not taking up any space. And yeah, I've got a Victron MPPT solar controller. The um, 15 amp one works very, very well. It's got a built-in 150 watt PS sine wave inverter. And yeah, it obviously charges from the car while the car is driving, from 220 and from solar. It does a good job. Batteries are located here at the back. Not much more I can say, really. So for solar power, I use these Flexo Power 150 watt Mojave panels. I've got two of them. They do a more than adequate job of keeping the two 105 amp hour AGM batteries in the Echo going. I am planning on changing the batteries to lithium in the future. But yeah, they do a fantastic job, even in overcast weather like this. Only issue you really have is campsites with no sun whatsoever that are heavily shaded. But even then, they sort of limp through. Very happy with them. They fold up nice and small. And yeah, more than enough power. 
So another thing I really like about the Echo is where the gas bottles are stored. They're stored in these little hidden compartments, one on this side of the trailer, one on the other side of the trailer. Can take up to a five kilogram gas bottle. And I like that they're hidden away, not at the front of the trailer, so they're not susceptible to stone damage and they're nicely tucked away. Inside here, they are ratchet strapped down, so they're nice and secure. Only thing I really don't like is this key that you have to use to, to open and close here. It's really fiddly and you can't get it in. And so what I actually did is I got Echo to put two of these clips in. So you just undo the latch, open it up, gas bottles in there. I've got them in some canvas bags just to protect them, but yeah, as long as, so I've eventually stopped using this little thing. Just got the latches, works a treat. This is the nose cone area. And this has got to be the most versatile nose cone I've ever seen. So the options are endless. It can house up to a 90 liter fridge. So I could run another 90 liter fridge in here. But on a trip like this, and usually for me, it runs my proper full on toolkit, toolbox, it's running my hose pipes for filling up the trailer with water. The wash basins are housed in here and other bits and bobs, you know, um, my cop cooker is stored in here and all the cables for the solar panels tied up nicely. The amount of space in this thing is next level. I try to keep the ball weight of the trailer down so I don't put a big fridge in here, but you could. That's what it's designed for. A nice thing would have been to have a wood rack on top here, but obviously it won't open then. The new model Echoes, this is actually where the fridge is permanently housed and then the nose cones on top and the fridge slides out. And it's obviously got the two jerry can brackets on the side here. And I always fill these jerry can brackets up regardless, just for weight distribution. And always if I need an extra 40 liters, I've got it here. I'm probably one of those guys that wants to go overboard in terms of lighting around the campsite. When I want to enjoy the bush, I switch all the lights off, but when I want light, there needs to be light. I use these, I think they're National Lunar touch lights. So you tap them. This has got a white and a red option and three different brightness settings. I hang them around the trailer, but I still haven't found a good solution for this. I'm quite OCD, so these things don't help that. And I've tried to tighten them, but they just keep falling down. So if any of you guys have any suggestions on how I can hook these wires effectively around the trailer, please leave them in the comments below. But I really enjoy these lights. Eh? I've got one mounted to the side of the Echo and two freestanding ones that are hook on the poles. And they're waterproof, so I leave them out at night, no problems. And they throw an amazing amount of light. Eh? And then at night, if I want to keep the bugs away, I just change it to red three different settings. So at night, if you really wanted to leave them on the entire night to see what animals pass through camp, leave it on the red setting. Right, so the coupler system on the Echo 5, sort of the standard off-road coupler system. It's a very, very strong unit this, and it's obviously got the heavy duty coupler damper shock. Um, Definitely go for the heavy duty one. The light duty one just snaps. Doesn't matter what trip you go on. So I went for the heavy duty one. Uh, underneath here is obviously the skid plate that I spoke about earlier. And not much more to say. The Anderson for charging from the car. Here's uh, just the safety brake cable. And here is a little holder for the jockey wheel that just goes on top of when I'm uh, driving. So it's not low down in this bracket here because it tends to hit something like a rock or catch the sand so they made this one for me not much more to say really standard handbrake i went for the heavy duty jockey wheel the one with two wheels the single one is just not good enough for these trailers uh, just spend the extra money get the bigger one and get the bigger coupler damper shock that's what i'm saying and yeah very happy with the coupler system i've had zero issues and yeah the little skid plate at the bottom makes a big difference How does the Echo 5 tow? Well, I've brought it to the ultimate towing test. Here I'm driving between the Mababi Gate and Savuti in Botswana, Chobe National Park. And this is a trailer killer. Uh, there is the Marsh Road and the Sand Ridge Road. We've taken the Sand Ridge Road this time, which is 
Seems better than the marsh road, but still not easy on a trailer. What I must say is with the Echo, I don't notice it's behind the vehicle at all. That's not to say that you should be reckless and drive whatever speed and completely neglect the fact that there is a trailer behind you, but I don't worry. It's not something I worry about. I don't worry about towing. A lot of people say, why do you tow? You, you must always worry about this, another axle, another set of shocks, another two tires to worry about. I don't, because it just goes where the vehicle goes. So I'm never ever in a rush to my destination I take my time so there's no need to drive quickly I think if you drive quickly with a trailer you might be asking for trouble There have been a couple of times with this trailer where we've had to make up time, uh, especially in the central Kalahari between Kadi and Bape. I think it's like 160, 190 kilometers we did. And I really pushed the trailer there and it had no problems, which is amazing. So if you do have to push it, it's not to say that it can't do it, but I take it easy, but I must say it's just a fantastic trailer. I like the length of the trailer, I can turn into tight spots and yeah it just uh, doesn't sway i don't know if that has to do with the sway control in the 200 series but yeah it's an absolutely fantastic trailer to tow it's now fully loaded water fuel tent on top everything so yeah i wouldn't be towing it as often if it wasn't as nice a trailer to tow and the one thing i might say is on my desert wolf i've got the the track of the trailer where the two tires sit is exactly the same as the 200 series Whereas with the Echo, that's not the case. So I might be looking at changing that in the future. Uh, you just have to change the axle width. So there's also a bash plate or skid plate underneath the actual coupler of the Echo. So if you do hit a rock, it hits that first, protects the rest of the equipment there. So now Echo claimed that this trailer is dust free when you go on these expeditions. When I originally bought the trailer, I didn't find that that was the case. And you know why? These latches, they're absolutely amazing, eh? They just fold out like that and then you can open the door. And because they've got this latching mechanism where you clamp it down, it should theoretically be dust free. But there's a very important component about this. This nut and bolt, they need to be adjusted correctly in order for this to push right against the rubber seal. 
once I readjusted them it was completely dust free so far on this trip dust free did my curry curry pans dust free so just make sure this nut and bolt are adjusted correctly for this to push right against the rubber seal they use automotive seals and it's got to be one of the worst things when you get to a location and all your gear is dusty especially the kitchen so this tip will keep you dust free and very happy in terms of maintenance on the trailer, I do a full service after every big trip and a minor checkup before I leave on a trip. Especially with regards to checking the suspension, wheel bearings, brakes, coupler and axle. This is a fantastic trailer, so much so that I did a complete overhaul on it to make it even better. But that's for another video. The Echo 5 has taken me to some great campsites and I cannot wait to see what the future holds. So there it is that's my in-depth walk around and review of the echo 5 trailer it's got to be one of the best purchases i've made i can't wait to still take the echo 5 to the most remote places in africa but thank you guys for watching the video and if you enjoyed the episode please don't forget to like and subscribe and until the next adventure cheers